Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you what I do to artificially hatch a spawn. And what artificially hatch means is I will be taking the male out and raising the fry myself without the male tending the nest. The reason I'm artificially hatching is because this male is a proven egg eater. He's eaten eggs twice. So he always takes really good care of them at first. As you can see, he's got a nice clump in his little nest there. But the next day, he always eats them. So I am not going to risk that happening, and I'm just going to take him out, and I'll show you the steps I take to artificially hatch. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is the female still in here and the male still in here. They just finished spawning recently. So I'm going to take him out, take her out, and then show you the next step. Okay, so we've got our pair out. I also have another female out that was spawned in this tank. Um, now what we're going to do to artificially hatch is we're going to lower this water level down. We're going to lower it down until it's just barely hitting the top of the sponge filter here. That'll be about three inches, give or take. Um, I'll take the tube, the uplift tube, off the sponge filter so that there's a little bit of surface movement, but it's going to be very low surface movement. Um, you know, pretty much like it is now, where it's a little bit of a ripple, but not enough to like move the eggs around or anything. Um, the reason you lower the water level is because when the fry start falling, when they start hatching and falling from the nest, um, without a male there to pick them up and put them back in the nest, it's harder for them to swim, you know, all the way up to the top. So, um, as far as I understand it, that's the reason for lowering the water level. So I'm going to go ahead and take it down. I'm hoping that this nest is not too bad, too hard. Uh, what's the word? I'm having brain issues lately. I hope it's not too heavily attached so the nest will come down easily. Um, sometimes if you get a nest that's stuck really well to the side and you lower the water level, the nest will just stick. It won't follow the water. So um, I'm going to slowly lower the water level down. If it looks like the nest is sticking to the side, what I'll do is take a piece of paper or a, you know, a razor blade or something, kind of scrape it off so that it's just free floating in the water. So I'm going to pause it again while I lower the water level and then check back. Okay, so as you can see, I've lowered the water level, and as I mentioned, the nest and the eggs were sticking to the side as they came down. As you can see, there's eggs kind of sitting on the side above the water, and what I did instead of a razor blade or something is I just took a pipette and very gently kind of just wash the side with water from the pipette and wash the eggs back down into the nest very gently and so I couldn't continually film this process and siphon at the same time but I would take it down maybe a half an inch or an inch and then stop and wash the eggs back down take it down another in half an inch or so and wash the eggs back down again and as you can see they're still pretty much balled up in the nest. They didn't start sinking or falling to the bottom so um, so that's you know a good thing. And as you can see water levels just barely above the sponge filter. The top of the sponge filter is sticking out. Okay so the top is off the filter and as you see I've kind of um, turned up the air just a little bit so it's bubbling a little bit more and creating a tiny bit of surface movement but not enough to disrupt the eggs over there. Now we're going to add methylene blue which prevents fungus on fish eggs. Um, very important when you're um, artificially hatching because the male is not there to clean the eggs. So the important thing to remember with this is that it will stain everything, your clothes, your hands, um, 
the silicone on the aquarium it stains everything so be very careful as you can see I have two fish bags I keep this bottle double bagged in these fish bags when I'm not using it just in case it were to you know fall over or something so we're gonna take it and we're gonna put I'm sure there's actual instructions for how much to put um, I go by look more than anything you want it to kind of be a medium blue so we're gonna mix this up and because there's you know yellow tint to this water from the IAL or the Indian almond leaf it's gonna look more green than blue but it's mostly blue and just kind of mixing it around Okay, so it doesn't show up well on the picture, but okay, there you go. You can see it's kind of like a medium blue. It's not super dark, but it's not very light either. And that's um, how I dose my methylene blue. So I'm going to turn the camera off now and we'll check back in in two days when the eggs start hatching to see how they're doing. Okay, so it's two days since this pair spawned, right? Yes. And if I can zoom in, maybe not. you'll see that we have fry hanging and the nest has kind of dissipated, but Oh, it doesn't want to focus. But this little guy is a, a fry. You can see he's still got his white egg sac. Okay, you can kind of see him there. Teeny tiny. Still has the egg sac. We'll be free swimming probably tomorrow. Um, but just kind of hanging out at the top. Um have quite a few eggs that did not hatch and just kind of fell toward the bottom. Um, I'll be picking these out with a pipette. And you can't really see it because it's all the way at the back of this tank, but there's more fry hanging out on the sponge filter. You can kind of see one there toward the top and then there's a couple there you can see a fry kind of swimming around at the top. So they're kind of sticking to the sponge filter. They're sticking around the, the top. Not a whole lot of them, I guess. You know, there was a, quite a few eggs, but I'd say maybe 50 fry, which is still a good number. That's a perfect number for me. But um, definitely this method, you don't get a huge survival rate, but compared to having zero because the male ate them all, it's a, you know, it's a plus. So there, again, you can see several eggs that didn't hatch. For whatever reason. So, that's my take on artificially hatching. There's, you know, tons and tons of methods to, um, to do it. That's just my way. Okay, I was gonna stop the video yesterday, um, but I wanted to see if I could get a better view and show you guys some of the fry. So I've got my handy dandy flashlight. Now, if you look back there, and I actually didn't even see this yesterday, there's actually quite a few eggs that didn't hatch. Um, Again, this process is not something that you generally get a high hatch rate from. Um, I'd have to do some more reading into it to see if there's ways to make it more successful and whatnot. But, and I know there's things like egg tumblers and such. I've never had any experience with those. But there are a bunch of unhatched eggs. But you can also see, look at all the fry that are kind of sticking to the side of the the tank here 
And there's some back there in the corner. It's hard to get a good view because it's, you know, so far back and the water's tinted. But you've got fry there. There's fry on the sponge filter. There's a couple that were right here at the front. I don't know if I can find them again. They might have moved. Oh no, they're right there. So again, you can see them and they're almost free swimming. Not quite. And then again, you can see those two white dots right there, some more unhatched eggs. So I'd say based on what I'm seeing, at least 30% hatched. Um, maybe up to 50. It'll be easier to tell when they're free swimming because a lot of them are back there in that back corner. But, you know, not ideal, but also better than nothing, as I said before. So I just wanted to check back in really quick and show you guys these. By the time this video is posted, these guys might be up to a week old. So um, I'm kind of backlogged on my videos. So if this, if I don't get this posted pretty soon, I'll edit it again and add some updates but that's them so I'm pretty happy with this you know 100% hatch rate is just a pipe dream when you're artificially hatching but I definitely would like to um, maybe look into some more options on different ways to artificially hatch this is just the most ba basic method Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.